الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يسلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Furqan, chapter 25, in the verses 30, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحْجُورًا Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that on the day of judgment, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will complain to Allah that this is my ummah who has given up and thrown the book, the Qur'an, behind their backs. So this is the topic, inshallah. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah give us tawfiq and sincerity to speak the truth in the light of the Qur'an and the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad to understand them, to accept them in the hearts and to implement them in the life. If we know this ayah and if we reflect on the meaning of this ayah, where the ayah says that on the day of judgment, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will complain to Allah. And we know that as Muslims, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will do the shafaatul kubra. He will intercede on the behalf of the believers. But this ayah is slightly different than that meaning. This ayah says that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will complain on the day of judgment regarding the people who have received the Qur'an but they have not looked after the Qur'an as it should be. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحْجُورًا They had the book but they have abandoned it. Now if we understand this ayah, there are so many points are there with regarding to this ayah. Number one, we are in the month of Ramadan and Allah has said in the Quran, chapter 2, verse 185, Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. 
In the month of Ramadan, Allah has revealed the Quran. Hudalli Nas, guidance for the mankind. In Surah Al-Qadr, it says, Inna anzallahu fi laylat al-Qadr. We have revealed this Quran in the night of Qadr, the powerful night. So Allah SWT speaks about the revelation of the Quran and also speaks about the month, also speaks about the day, the time. And we know it took 23 years to complete the whole Quran. And if we see the hadith related to the month of Ramadan and also to the fasting, Rasulullah SAW has said that there are two creations of Allah, or you can say there are two sources of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will intercede on the behalf of the believers on the Day of Judgment. And that one is fasting and the second is Quran. So again, this hadith also has got different meaning than the Quranic verse that we read now from Surah Al-Furqan. Surah Al-Furqan says that the people received the Quran and they have abandoned it. And this will be the case Rasulullah Sallallahu will put to Allah Subhanahu Wa on the Day of Judgment. And this, uh, this hadith says that this Quran will come and intercede on the behalf of the person on the Day of Judgment, on the believer. And if we see the other part of it, SubhanAllah, which is the main subject of mine today. We are expecting, uh, may Allah give reward to Uncle Bashir, all the time he says, Abdul Majid, I want you to speak about uh, the signs of the Qiyamah and how the Qiyamah, what the things will happen before the Qiyamah. If I tell you honestly, my brothers and sisters, Qiyamah has already come, the time when Rasul came. Because Allah says in وَاِقْتَرَبَتِ السَّعَى وَانْشَقَّ Qamar. In Surah Al-Qamar Allah says the first ayah that the, uh, the day of judgment has come close and the splitting of the sun, the moon took place. So Qiyamah is already had come. But if you see the system of the whole universe, it has got its time period. A practical example, <coughs> If we see, there are non-Muslims who talk about the creation of the earth and heaven and Allah says six days and in some verses it is two and four and two. So they say it's eight and it's a contradiction. So they bring all those issues. But my point here is to make you understand that if Allah wanted to create the whole universe by just a word, kun for yakun, he could have done that. But the stability, the confirmation, the solidity, the establishment of the earth by itself with all that is there in it, or the whole universe, <coughs> it is not suitable for the, the subject itself, or the object itself. That's why Allah SWT gives time to that. And that's why it's, it is mentioned in six days. Another example, if you want to build, create, the, to construct the building, we know. I lived in Dubai all my life, and before I came to UK, there were construction companies which can build the house in overnight. Which can build the house, not house palace, overnight. Why? Because they have ready-made building walls, ready-made toilets, ready-made rooms, everything. And they will just bring the crane and fix it. But it is totally different than the normal houses which are constructed when they dig the ground and then they put the pillars, they put the foundation, then they put the pillars on the ground floor, then they put the ceiling, the first floor, and then they put the pillars. Like that, it takes time. So everything to be perfect, it takes time. Another practical example. When a child is conceived by the woman in her womb, it's only a liquid. Why she had to wait for nine months? There's a time limit for that. Because the size of the womb at one particular period is limited to expand. It's limited. It takes time. And practical example, if you overeat, what happens to you? Boom! You are throwing out. You are vomiting. You don't feel easy. You want to take this medicine, that medicine to digest your food. That's only for just merely overeating. So imagine if Allah gives the child, child 
just on a one say, convey a corn and the child is four kilo child in the womb of the mother. You will die. Her bl bl stomach will blow. Yes or no? Yes. Same thing. When the child is born, every one of us wants to become like a man immediately. But how can that be possible? If you can't even, you know, crawl properly, how can you stand? And if you can't stand, how can you walk? And if you can't walk, how can you run? And how you will get the understanding of your brain? And the child who is a child, we know that child does not have the understanding as a normal human being. So imagine if you see a woman gives the birth to a child who is only a one day now, or one hour old, and after sometimes you just blink of eye and you see a man like me, a giant. You will get scared of me. You say he's a monster, maybe an abnormal person. So this has got time. Based on that, why I brought these examples to make you understand that Qiyamah has already come. But there are certain things to appear, it takes time. Every sign of the Qiyamah has got its time. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. My explanation gives you the understanding? Yes. yes. One of the signs of the Qiyamah is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Yati ala nasi zamanun. Yati ala nasi zamanun. La yabqa min al Qur'ani illa rasmuhu. Wa la yabqa min al Islami illa smuhu. That there will be a time for my ummah. The time will come. When the Qur'an will be left as a script, which is today. And Islam will be left as a name, which is today. If we see the non-Muslims, how they relate the Quran, Islam today. Last week, Jay Smith, may Allah guide him to Islam. And may Allah reward brother uh, Richard, he is here now. He sent me his clip. And because he, Richard is Christian and he, uh, J. Smith, is his scholar, so whatever the explanation or justification he gives, definitely I, I don't disagree with him. He will understand the way he is explaining. But if we as Muslims and a person who knows Quran, and if we listen to J. Smith and David Wood from America or Canada, I don't know which place he is from, these two speakers are anti Islam. They don't know anything of Alif Bata, even the Haruf, 28 Haruf, they don't know. If I'll ask them, okay, tell me the sequence of them, they, they can't. So compared to our children who are nine years old, who have memorized more than 6,000 verses of the Quran, up and down, anywhere you can ask them, and that your boy who is nine years old can give the answer to quote you the ayah, quote you the number of the ayah, quote you the verses, the page number, quote you the, you know, words in the ayah, how many letters are there. But these guys, two guys, which are very famous now, they both are young people, not old to like a person who means their appearance is very attractive, handsome boys, Christian boys. I love them. And I wish that may Allah guide them before they die. And Islam will be forwarded to them before they die. This is a hadith which we believe, this is a ayah in the Quran is Surah Al-Nisa and Surah Al-Maidah that they, any Christian who will die before his death, Islam will be forwarded to them. If they want to accept it, if they, if they don't want, it's their choice. So no, no compulsion. And plus I'm not here to convert the Christians to Muslim, Islam or to, you know, uh, else, uh, something else. No, Alhamdulillah. My intention is that this, the message should be sent to the people. Now I'm coming back to this point. These two men they are talking about Islam, which we Muslims feel ashamed of. Like Brother Dawood, may Allah reward him. Last speech before Muhammad gave the speech Friday before that, I was speaking about the attack that took place in Manchester. I'm not saying that I'm sorry for that. Why should I be sorry for something you're not done by some, someone else? And if he is as cracked as Muslim, I don't care. Because I'm Muslim and he's Muslim. So who is a true Muslim is between me and Allah. Why should I be worried about what he has done? But at the same time, I have a concern for this attack and this attack which took place on the London Bridge. I have a, I have a concern. Jay Smith, David uh, the Wood and those two politicians of UK, they are related.
relating this attack with our Islam. They are relating this Islam, this attack with our Quran. Jay Smith in Hyde Park, he is relating, giving this speech for 45 minutes, and he is saying that this is Quran that made them do that. This is Muhammad who made them do that. This is Allah, he made them do that. This is the Islam that made them do that. No. Maybe the Qiyamah, the sign has come that Islam that nothing is left of Islam except his name. No, still Islam is existing within us. Maybe for majority of the people, the Qiyamah has come for them because they don't know anything of Islam. But me as a Muslim, this is my country now. I'm in this country. This is my country. I have a legal status to stay in this country. I'm a British man. At the same time, I'm a Muslim. And at the same time, I believe in Allah. And at the same time, I have the right to defend something is against my, my Allah. I'm a British, I'm a Muslim. I have respect for all the people in the, in the UK. But when it comes to something that goes against my Quran, I'm a Muslim, I'm a British, I have a right to say that this is not in the Quran. <laughs> it is possible, yes, that there is nothing left of the Quran except the scripts people don't understand. No, I as a Muslim and a British Muslim, I understand what Quran is. And Quran, not, Quran is not teaching us attacks like this. Nowhere in the Quran. And those people who are quoting the verses from the Quran where it says, kill every non-Muslim, that's not the, with the context. That's only to the time when it is a war, when the non-Muslims are attacking Muslims, Muslims have the right to attack them back. It's for the self-defense. Not everywhere. They don't quote those verses where Allah SWT talks about the peace at the time of war. And these politicians, these two politicians, it, it was a member, there, there was a program on BBC from Manchester, you know the Muslim lady, she was running that program. And these two media, these politicians, they said that Islam should be banned in this country. They said the Quran, teaching of the Quran should be banned in this country. The Imam should be banned from teaching the Quran. And we Muslims are all busy in our dunya. Why? Okay, I came from Dubai, I'm staying in this country, I'm a legal British Muslim now. By right, I have all the right as a Muslim, as a British citizen. But what about those citizens, those Muslims, British Muslims who are born over here? Who have got nothing outside the, this country? You're going to ban their Islam? And where are the Muslims talking about this? Who, where are the Muslim MPs who are talking, no, not against, talking against that? No, we are as equal to the Hindus, Christians and Jews or the Sikh as a Muslim here. We are equal because we are British. We are British and we follow our religion. What people are doing is not our concern. What we have to do is that is our concern. This is what Allah has asked us. تِلْكَ أُمَّةٌ قَدْ خَلَدْ لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَلَكُمْ مَا كَسَبْتُمْ وَلَا تُسْأَلُونَ عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Chapter 2, chapter 2 verse 141, Allah says that they were the people, they have gone. You are the people, you will go. Allah will not ask you about them what they were doing. Allah will not ask you. So that's clear. <laughs> but as a Muslim, as a British Muslim, I have a right to stay in this country and live in this country with my true Islam, with my true Quran, with my true Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, and with my true belief of Allah. So these politicians, there are only two out of thousands of politicians are there. They are supporting us, yes. They are saying the Muslims have got nothing to do that with this. And they also, but even two words, two people make, you know, difference. Because millions are following them. Even these two speakers, the Christian speakers, if they debate with us on the stage, no problem. They can criticize. They can say anything they want. And they can discuss with us. Okay, these are the verses. They are talking about killing of the non-Muslims. What do you have to explain about it? We can explain, but coming in the public and they have got millions of followers on YouTube, millions of followers on Facebook, millions of followers and they talk about the things which are not true. And what they talk? They say, 
the attack in Manchester, it is taught in the Quran. Muhammad is teaching them, Allah is teaching them, Quran is teaching them. And we Muslims, we can't even come out and say, no, this is not what Quran is teaching. And we remain silent. And this is what the another point they say. Look, Muslims agree with this attack. That's why they're sitting in the houses. So coming back to this point, my brothers and sisters, the hadith is befitting us today. That there will be a time on my ummah where the Quran will be left as a text for them and Islam will be left as a name for them because this is how it's happening. People are quoting, known Muslims are teaching us today what Quran is saying and what they are teaching is wrong. We can't even defend that because we don't know what Quran is. 23 plus masjid in Luton. More than 5, 6,000 students are studying Quran. 32,000 Muslims plus Muslims are there in Luton. How many of us will really know Quran? How many of us know the translation of the Quran? Yes, but submitting the first documents to claim the benefits, we are experts. Making our car, you know, the accident of the car and claim from the claim specialist. I'm not talking about the company, okay? I'm just saying that those who are claim specialists, they purposely do the accident, they claim for that. They have medical doctors. Person has got nothing. But you have to go and attend the doctor and tell him, you know, I got a back pain because of the accident. You get 2,000, 3,000 pounds for that. We are explaining that. But when it comes to Quran, how many of us, 32 plus Muslims are there in Luton? And Luton is highlighted. Luton is my city. I'm from Luton. And when somebody speaks about Luton, according to Indian Muslim, the earth is considered to be a second mother. This is how they call it, mother. Luton is like a second mother to me. And you know the media is highlighting Luton. The biggest center of terrorists is Luton. What are we doing today, my brothers and sisters? We are only worried about voting is halal or voting is haram. We should not vote these people, we should not vote that people because it is shirk and kufr. It is shirk and kufr if you have British passport and you can't defend your iman. It is shirk and kufr when you have a, you know, Queen Elizabeth on your note and you make money out of that. That's and you don't defend your iman. That is kufr. Voting will give you a right to speak. Now I'm a citizen, I have a right to speak about my Islam and the right to live in this country peacefully. And they, they are the examples. Four years, these Christian scholars are coming in our masjid. And they are in peace. And none of you, mashallah, I give credit to all of you, mashallah. Wallahi, you are much better than all the other masjid that they are. If these people would have gone to their masjid even once or twice, they will be questioned. Why are you coming over here? What do you have? What's your agenda? What's your mission? You want to record our shame? You want to, uh, you know, nobody, Alhamdulillah, these people, four of them, five of them, every Friday they are here. This is our Islam. This is Islam which you have understood, Alhamdulillah, that these people have right to come over here. Yes or no? If these people would have gone to any other masjid, as I said, thousands of questions, yes or no? There was a lady, she, she, an English lady, she didn't know the etiquette of entering the masjid. She entered within her, on her dress and she was desperate. She was prob in a problematic situation. People, instead of asking her to, you know, what's your problem? They started asking questions. I ah, am this and that, you should not come. Come on, she'll die. So this is an example, my brothers and sisters. We as Muslims of Britain, we have the full right to hear, stay in this country peacefully and no politician, no politician has the right to say that they have to ban Islam, they have to ban Islam Quran, they have to ban the Masajid. No, we are British Muslims here, we have the right to stay as same, as equally as the Hindus are staying in this country. The Christians who are staying in this country, the Jews who are staying in this country, the Sikh who are staying in this country. If they are allowed to stay in this country because they are peaceful people, 
we are also allowed to stay in this country because we are peaceful people too. And what the people are doing is not Islam. What people are doing is not from Quran. What people are doing is not what Allah wants them to do. <coughs> Islam is a religion of peace. 23 years, how many crimes took place in Mecca and Medina? Forget about the war. War, you can't say anything. If you want to talk about war, then there are verses in the Bible which speaks about the war. There are verses in Mahabharata that speak about the war. There are verses in Gita that speaks about the war. The Sikh, the doctrine, you may not know. In the Sikhism, the way they appear, they say they are Mujahideen. Their appearance, because we don't understand about them, so we don't understand, we don't know why they are appeared like that. For them to have the turban, for them to have the beard, and for them to have this sword hanging on their, their left side, this is the part of their faith. They cannot be a true Sikh unless they have, because they are saying the Sikh is born as a warrior. And his Sikh is dying as a warrior. And they bring that from the teaching of Granth. But nobody speaks about that. And if they are peaceful, then we are peaceful too. Why? This is the example. This is the example. And nobody from the Quran can ever say that, uh, did you ever hear from any Imam in all over UK that after the Jummah Khutbah or after the Eid Khutbah, he said, go and burn any house? No, no one in the whole UK, no Imam can speak like, give the speech like that. Why? Because there is nothing to say like that. Islam is saying that go and meet your neighbors after the Eid, yes or no? Yes, whatever we cook in the house in the morning on the day of Eid, we are serving to our neighbors, yes? This is what our Imam is teaching. And these two politicians and these two uh, Christian evangelists, they are saying that they should ban Islam in Israel, Britain. They should ban Quran in Israel, Britain. They should ban Imam's teaching in the masjid. They also abuse. They say this Imams they only teach them how to clean yourself in the toilet, nothing more. And they, do, they don't talk anything against this, no. Yes, we talk about it. But we talk about it, the things which are related to our deen, and when they are allegedly said in the public that this is what Islam is teaching. We talk about that. So why I brought this khutbah today? Because the Qiyamah has come now. Our Qiyamah has come. We are waiting for the time, our time has already come. Because we have forgotten the teaching of the Qur'an. My one voice will help you nothing. If this video of mine is edited, it will be given to the government and they will say, look, Abdul Majid is preaching against Islam and I will be in the prison or I will be deported back to India. What will happen to you? Nothing. You will have chicken and chips. <coughs> This is how maximum you will think of me. Yes. You will do, this is how you will do. But I don't care, alhamdulillah, whether you have sympathy for me or not. But as a Muslim, as a British Muslim, as a Muslim for your voice, voice for you Muslim, British Muslim, I have the right to say this. Attack in Manchester, attack in London Bridge, attack in Borough Market, has got nothing to do with Allah. Allah is completely clean and innocent from that allegations. It has got nothing to do with Quran. Quran is not teaching that. Quran is teaching peace. Quran is teaching humanity. Quran is teaching preservation of humanity. Quran is teaching preservation of the life of the creatures. Even as I said that the slaughtering, many Hindus in India, they hate us Muslims because they we slaughter the animals. They think that we are slaughtering the cow, that we are slaughtering their mothers. No. We are not slaughtering their mothers. They are not, the cows are not their biological mothers. We are not slaughtering their own biological mothers. We are not going into their houses and killing their women. No, we are slaughtering this animal. And Rasul is saying that your uh, weapon should be sharp, your knife should be sharp, so that when you cut the throat of the animal, should not, you know, feel the pain by the animal. This is how the Islam is. But my brothers and sisters, we as Muslims today, we don't know Quran. And if you remain like this, 
And we are satisfied, you know, because my son is going to the masjid and he's learning Quran. So he has finished the qaeda, the next day he is, you know, next day the boy comes with the jalebi and uh, rasgulli and chocolate and this and that. Oh, because my son has, you know, started reading of the Quran. Okay, after that, the Quran is finished, party. Quran is finished, hymns is finished, party. What have you done for that? How much Quran do you know? You are degree holder, you are bachelor, you are master, you are IT expert, you are media expert, you are this and that. And when it comes to these four type of people, two politicians and two Christian evangelists, when they talk against your Islam, nothing happens to you? It doesn't go to your heart? It doesn't touch your heart? Nothing happens to you when they blame Luton as a, a town of the center of terrorism. This is the second mother. This land, Luton, is a second mother for us. But when the media says this is the terrorist, the center of terrorist, nothing happens to us. We can't even say with our words. <coughs> We can't even say Rasul has said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran, fal yugayyur biyadi, fa illam yasatih, fa bi lisani. Dawud, fa illam yasatih, fa bi qalbi, wa dhalika adha'fu al-iman. If you see corruptions, when you see corruptions, try to stop with your hands. And this is according to correct understanding of Islam. Okay, when you see the, see the corruptions, individual people is not allowed. This is a consensus of Islam. Consensus of all the Muslim scholars. When you see munkar, when you see corruptions, when you see something wrong, you have no right to take the law in your hand ind independently or individually. This is the consensus of Islam. If people are doing that, they are wrong. This is not from the teaching of Islam. But you have to stop with your hands. With the hands is what? Our hands are what? Authorities are our hands. Okay, this hadith is applicable to all of us. That when we see corruptions, we have to stop it with the hands. Our hands are our authorities. Our hands are this police because we pay tax to them. They are paid because of our tax. They are meant to protect us. They are meant to stop these corruptions. So we, our hands are this. Our hands are court. Our hands are government. And we have to stop by taking their means. And there are people who are using this government for the, you know, harming other Muslims. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking in a positive way. When you see corruptions, you have to stop it with the help of the munkar, with the help of the authorities. If you can't do that, you don't know who to approach. You don't know who to approach. Maybe you think, okay, the police are with them. Okay. Maybe you think the, the judge, non-Muslim judge will be with them. You think maybe the government is with them? Okay. For in them you sotek mobilisanihi. But if you can't with the high hands, you can't take the authorities, support of the authorities, at least you can preach. Come on radios. Come on the centers where the people are walking all around. All the type of people they come around. Come on the stage. Come on TV. Come on radio. Write your articles on the newspapers. Tell them with your words. But who will say that? Those Muslims who can't even read Surah Al-Fatiha properly? Who will defend that? Who are just waiting for the home office to give them their status to make them, you know, legal in this country by submitting the false documents? Who will defend this? Where do we stand in this? And look the second part. Prophet has said the first part is take the help of the authorities. Second part is speech. But who can do that? No. And the third part. And the worst thing is people like Dawood, he said that, Abdul Majid, we should not feel sorry for what? Okay, alhamdulillah. But, do we feel sorry for the, our Imams who are leading the prayers and they, the media is saying that they, are, they should be banned? Do we feel sorry for that? Our Imams are not doing this. Our Imams are not preaching that. And somebody is hiding in the masjid and preaching that, that's between him and Allah. But the balance, everywhere in calculation, 
When you have a decimal point and it goes 5 plus, it is rounded up to 1. Yes or no? So we have to see the balance where the majority is. The majority is of peace. Majority is of peace. Peace, peace in the Quran. They bring 4-5 verses of the Quran out of context and 6,000 ayat of the Quran speak about the peace. See the ratio. 6,000 and is to 2, is to 3. Thousands and thousands of Muslims promote peace. And if 2-3 people or 2-3 groups stand up and talk against their peace in the name of Islam. See the majority. Why only in the maths? Why only in the geometry? Why in this and that? Why now that the, the, today the country is in trouble because the government is hanging, no parliament, no, no prime minister because of the majority? Majority, so majority, why don't you see the majority in the Quran? Why don't you see the majority of the Muslim community? Who does what? The majority is promoting peace. Majority is against attack. Majority is against what these are, you know, putting the allegations on Muslims. And who will say this? I will blame all those people who are in the media, whether they are running the TV shows and if they are Muslims. And if they are running radio shows, they are Muslims. And those who are journalists and they are Muslims, I blame them for that. And at the same time, the, non, the Muslims who are unlettered Muslims, Jahil Muslims, unpoor Muslims, they also have no excuse in the sight of Allah. Because the next part will explain to you what is it. So I was saying the Qiyamah has come now and it can appear any time and wait for the Friday. Friday will be the day where the Qiyamah will come. This is one of the signs that the Quran will go away from us and based on the ayah of the Surah Al-Quran we have abandoned the Quran because we don't know what Quran is and I have given this speech thousands of times that there are six things that a Muslim to do to believe in the Quran. Allah SWT has said in Surah Al-Baqarah, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ To whom we have given the Qur'an, to whom we have given the Torah, to whom we have given the Injil, to whom we have given the Zabur, to whom we have given the books and Suhuf and Mus'haf, these people, they read it as it should be read, including the Muslims. They read the Qur'an as it should be read. They are the true believers of it. That means we have to read the Quran. We have to read the Quran as it should be read. We have to read the Quran as it should be understood. We have to read the Quran, it should be a fraud. No doubt in it, we have to accept it in our heart. We have to read the Quran to so apply it in our life. We have to read the Quran to preach the truth of Quran. And we have to do this five duties till our last breath. It's not Imam, it's not the degree holder, it's not PhD, university uh, student of Islamic studies had to do that. No, you have to read the Quran. You have to understand the Quran. You have to accept the Quran in your heart without doubt from Alif Lam Mim to Surah Nas. You have to accept this in the in your heart. You have to apply it in your life. Do's and don'ts has to be in your life. Samirna wa Atana. We have heard this Quran and we will apply this. And Balik, you have to preach this Quran. And if we do this till our last breath, we have believed in it. Otherwise, we'll fall into that characteristic. But before that, Allah will send an animal. Beast, Dabbatul Ard. Allah has said in Surah An-Namal that the Dabbatul Ard, the beast will come and beast will teach humans. Not only humans, even to the Muslims who are saying that they have Quran with them. The beast will teach them the Tawheed of Allah, worshipping of Allah. The man has gone to that extent now. And we are not different than this ayah. Because the Google Sheikh Google is a beast, like an instrument. A non understanding instrument is teaching us our deen today. We are accessing only Google. We don't know what Quran says literally. We don't know what Hadith says literally. So our digital beast is Google, Sheikh Google. Asalaamu Alaikum Sheikh Google every morning. Our digital shaykh, our digital beast 
is the ayah is befitting. I'm not going to be those uh, super Salafi will listen to my khutbah. They will say, look, he is interpreting the ayah wrongly. He is saying, Allah is saying that the Dabbatul Ab will come. And Abdul Majid is saying that this is Google is the Dabbatul Ab. Yes, I'm saying digital beast. Take my word. I'm not saying the beast that is mentioned. Beast in the Quran, it is like a Godzilla. Godzilla, Godzilla, you know that. That will come, definitely will come. But that will teach the humans. Today, we have come to that position where we have no access to our Quran directly. We are based on this digital beast. All this, whether it is text message or even the Quran, we we'll only listen to the, from the radio, from the uh, mobile, from the, uh, you know, Facebook or this book and that book. But we don't have access to the Quran in our hands. And plus poor women, when they want to read the Quran, we bring the issues. You can't touch the Quran when you are in menses. Ha <laughs> ha, this is how maximum we preach about women. You have no access to the Quran yourself and let the women at least have access to the Quran, whatever. Why you are stopping them from that? We are sending our children to the masjid, we don't understand this. So my brothers and sisters, this is the worst thing that will happen. The beast will come and teach us our deen. <coughs> and more allegation and more surprising thing for you. Today, today, they have put, I'm just putting the question. Pay attention to this question. And raise your hands if you understood what I'm saying. If today any part of the world stands up and announce in public that we're going to throw the drone bomb on Kaaba, the house of Allah, how many of you will go and protect it? Why? Because we worship Kaaba? Because Kaaba is our boot and statue? No! Kaaba is the house of Allah. Allah. But let, you, let me tell you, Allah does not need to protect Kaaba. Allah does not need us to protect Kaaba because now, till now, Allah is protecting it. Till now, Allah is protecting it because the drone will come from here or there or this or that. It's only Allah will say, Kun for your kun, it will change the direction. Yes? Allah can do that. But why the Kaaba is protected today and one of the signs of the Qiyamah, before the Qiyamah, the Ethiopians, their background is known to be like slaves. Ethiopians will raid the Kaaba and will destroy the Kaaba and Allah will not stop them. Because that will be done with the permission of Allah. Why? Because there will no, nobody will be existing at that time who will be remembering Allah. Nobody at that time who will be knowing what Hajj is. Nobody will know what Islam is. Nobody will know what Quran is. So why to keep the Kaaba there? And Allah will bring someone else to destroy that. And we are waiting for that time, my brothers and sisters. Now I have no concern about other people, my brothers and sisters. I have concern about you people. You are my brothers and sisters. You are my family. And this khutbah is specially for you people. That you have to go back to these two links which I'm going to tell you. Or you can ask Brother Abdul Akbar, he is in media, Masha, he knows. That show which was uh, shown by a Muslim lady, she is an anchor. The show was shown on TV, BBC channel. And it was about the, you know, uh, voting as well as the attack on Manchester and also the attack which took place in London. And these two politicians, subhanAllah, this is how it happens. Allah plans like that. They didn't even get one seat. And you know who are they. They didn't even get one seat. You can see their calculations. This is the plan of Allah. Allah wishes good for you, my brothers and sisters. Don't talk about whether voting is kufr or shirk. Allah still wants we wish good for you, peace for you all. And that's the reason these two politicians they were saying ban Quran in UK, ban Islam in UK, ban the preaching of uh, imams in UK, and ban this and uh, deport the Muslims from uh, UK. You have to listen to that. And whatever the halal means, peaceful means, you have my brothers and sisters. And the best peaceful means is the pen. Yes or no? Yes, use that to say that these two politicians should not say this and they should apologize in public because that has got nothing to do with Islam. And Jay Smith and David Wood, 
these two people, they should be stopped from preaching Islam in public in that way. If they have got any issues, then they can go back to the scholars if they want. If they can debate with the scholars in public and let the public decide whether what they're saying is right or wrong. But going into the public and then after 45 minutes preaching the speech and saying Allah is promoting this, Quran is promoting this, Muhammad is promoting this, and Rasul, the, the, the Islam is preaching this, this we have to take a serious stance of that. Because these people have got thousands and thousands of followers. And when they hear this, they, these people are the threat. Yes or no? When the non-Muslims are listening to them, and extreme creamers, Christ, Christians, those who are extreme, they, they're holding the extreme views, and the fundamentalist Christians, when they listen to these people, and they, when these people are quoting the Quranic verses, what they will do? They will come out in the street, and they will say, any woman with the hijab, they will attack her. This is a threat. They are creating the threat, not the peaceful Muslims, not the Imams, not the Quran, not Allah, not Rasul. These people are doing that. For us, for us as these four non-Muslims, as these four Christians, don't you think it is our duty to protect them? If any harm comes to them? Say it loudly, please. It should go in this voice. Yes. 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 This is what our Islam says. Our Islam will never say that when you find any Christian, go and kill them. So I'm not saying that the, uh, the, the Jay Smith or David uh, Wood should be beaten to death. No, I'm not saying that. Their contradicting speech should be stopped. Their speech should be banned. This politician should be banned from say, say, saying those statements. This is my right and this is your right too, my brothers and sisters. That's the reason I want to tell you. Now, finally, My brothers and sisters, we have to go back to the Quran. If you have got two houses, sell one house and use that one house for the teaching of the Quran, Allah will reward you. If you have got savings, use that and start using that for teaching the Quran, teaching the Quran with understanding, teaching the Quran with apply, applying in your life. Well, whether it is in the form of leaflets, whether it is in the form of digital boards that you, where you can preach, use your money for that cause. And if you are not doing that, my brothers and sisters, then this Quran will go away from our hearts. And Allah SWT will take away this Quran from us. Islam will go away from us. And the animal will come and teach us. And if that is done, then at the end of the day, we will be standing in front of Allah SWT and this Quran will be cursing us. And then we will be regretting, oh, I believed in the Quran and the Quran is cursing me. I relied on the Quran and Quran is taking me to the Jahannam. So this is the right time, my brothers and sisters. Right, fight for your right, peacefully. Okay, use all peaceful means and use all your savings. So that, alhamdulillah, your savings are not yours. When you die, it's not yours. Your people will be enjoying with that. Your saving is what you are spending in your lifetime for the good cause of Remember that. A man said to me, don't, don't you want to have life insurance? I said, okay, if I die, who, who will take the money? He said, your family. I said, yes, who, what will I benefit then? So I don't want the life insurance. My life insurance is with Allah because He gives you He will. You mean He gives the life and He gives the death. So Alhamdulillah, my brothers and sisters, use that money. Use that house, use that property, use that garage you have, use that unit that you have for the good cause and only for teaching of Quran. This is the right time. Otherwise, Qiyama is in our heart now. Qiyama is very close to us. The beast will come and teach us the Quran. Subhanallah. Inna Allah wa malaikati wa salluna ala nabi. Ya ayu alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama sallita ala Ibrahima wa ala ala Ibrahima nika hamidu majid. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد واقم الصلاة